David Dobrik cancels his big comeback, Kim Kardashian fails her first law exam, and those mobile brain games you've been playing may not actually be increasing your brain power. All that and a lot, lot more. But first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we would really appreciate it. We have an exciting announcement for you. One of our other talented hosts at the company named Lindsay has just launched her very own reaction channel called Peach. So definitely go subscribe to her new channel to show some support and let her know that IO sent you. And with that out of the way, let's begin the Inform Overload Weekly Roundup. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about Kim Kardashian failing her first law exam. For a while now, Kim Kardashian's main drive has become a qualified lawyer and work to abolish the death penalty. In the past, she has used her reality star status to meet with the president and fight for prison reform across the United States. Although to actually be a qualified lawyer is a lot of work and Kim certainly has a long road ahead of her. Recently though, news leaked that she had failed her first year law student exam, which is also commonly referred to as the baby bar. This exam is often used by unaccredited law schools in California and only requires that students get a 70% to pass. Despite failing though, she has insisted that she will retake the exam very soon. During a live Q&A on her Instagram, she confirmed this to her fans who were asking about how she was finding the bar exams. She says, extremely difficult. Unfortunately, I haven't passed yet, but I'm not giving up and I'm preparing to take it again soon. Not too long after the news had already leaked, a new preview was cut for an upcoming episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians where Kim told her sisters that she had failed the exam. In the clip, she says, if you're doing law school, the way I'm doing it, it is a four-year program instead of your typical three-year program, and after year one, you have to take the baby bar. This was actually harder, I hear, than the official bar, adding, I spent six weeks straight, 10 to 12 hours straight studying, and it was so important for me to take this and to not pass gets your spirits down and just makes you want to give up. And if Kim does pass the California State Bar in 2024, she is hoping to start her very own law firm and fight to abolish the death penalty, as I mentioned earlier. And during an interview with Vogue, she spoke more about the work that she has done towards this and said, abolish the death penalty is like so high up my list and as I have clients that you know have gone through close situations like Julius Jones in Oklahoma City that I'm really fighting for. It really makes you stop and just feel that you can't sit still until they right all of these wrongs. At least it sounds like her heart is in the right place but we want to hear what you think about this in the chat right now and while you do that let's send it over to Jared for some science. I get it. Hey, thanks, Johnny. What's happening, homies? It's your boy, the spiciest scientist in the game. And you already know we gotta get ourselves all jacked up. Cause we're talking about some science, baby. Let's go. Now you guys remember when we were younger, maybe you guys still do it. And you guys would play those games making you think that you were smarter, as in those like brain games. You know, the matching things, the equations, all the codes, that fun stuff. Well, they're actually useless. Yeah. So as per Bobby Stojanowski, a cognitive neuroscientist at Western University in Ontario, he explained, I quote, for every study that finds some evidence, there's an equal number of papers that find no evidence. However, a group of scientists, I wasn't invited, but whatever decided to conduct a study to further prove their theory. Taking about a thousand people who regularly play these brain games and comparing them to about 7,500 people who don't, well, the results were actually quite interesting. On average, those who played brain training games did so for about eight months, with some playing for as long as five years and others as short as just two weeks. Still, when compared to those who don't play the games at all, the results didn't differ all that much. Those a part of the study were asked to complete 12 cognitive tests, which assess one's memory, reasoning, and verbal skills. These tests included finding patterns, needing to move objects to find the correct path, and so on. And when the team compared the results, they noticed those who train had no advantage whatsoever over those who didn't. Or would it be those who don't? I should already train my brain to find out. <laughs> Even those who use training programs regularly for at least 18 months didn't show significant improvement over those who don't. Even things like age, gender, education, or socioeconomic status didn't change the outcome of the results, with those who train getting similar scores to those who never worked the muscle. The brain is a muscle. Is it a muscle? It's an organ. Is it a muscle? I think it's a muscle. Ah, whatever. I get it. As for Stojanowski, I quote, no matter how we slice the data, we were unable to find any evidence that brain training was associated with cognitive abilities. Although he explained in some scenarios, brain training could be beneficial, I quote, part of our goal was to look at brain training in the real world. It seems those who genuinely want to improve their brain capacity, or I guess just their overall intelligence, playing memorization games or puzzles on their computer, well, that just ain't it. You gotta get out there in the real world, you know, do real things, you know, like explore and see nature. Elizabeth Stein Morrow, a cognitive aging scientist at the University of Illinois at Urbana Campaign explained practicing these brain tests in real life situations is your best bet. I quote her saying that's a much better use of one's time than sitting at a computer and doing little tasks. And you guys know what we call that. 
We call it science, baby. I just got spit all over the place. All right, guys, back to Johnny. <laughs> Thanks for those updates, Jared. Now let's move on to some feel-good news, shall we? Today for our feel-good news segment, we have to give a shout out to Jaden Smith. To celebrate his birthday, Jaden launched the I Love You restaurant. The restaurant is a vegan food truck initiative that is doing its best to provide free meals for the Los Angeles homeless population. His vegan food trucks ended up feeding about 8,000 people that live in LA Skid Row. Eventually, his company even expanded their efforts to serve at-risk residents in New York City as well. During an interview with Com Complex, he spoke more about the restaurant and said, We were not able to actually get our food truck down to Skid Row and physically hand it out to people for obvious reasons. You're thinking about everything happening with COVID-19 and people having to stay home and all of that stuff. Well, if you're homeless, you can't stay home. So we've been donating everything that we can, vegan food, masks, clothes, hand sanitizer, and all different types of things. Although the food truck is just the first step for Jaden's ultimate vision of opening a brick and mortar vegan restaurant that will feed the homeless for free as well. Overall, it's nice to see a celebrity use their power and wealth to try and relieve a situation that is really bad right now in Los Angeles. With that though, let's send it over to the Spill Zone with Mackenzie. Thanks, Johnny. Today on the Spill Zone, we're going to be talking about David's alleged comeback to YouTube that has now been canceled due to backlash. So a few weeks ago, we were talking about how Corinna was going to be on David's podcast views in June of 2021, making it seem like he was gearing up for a comeback. And then more recently, an Instagram account called Demois exposed that David was going to be surprising whoever was left in the vlog squad with a Hawaiian vacation. Apparently, during the trip to Honolulu, the squad would film multiple videos that were going to be part of David's comeback to YouTube in 2022. However, a little while later, the same Instagram account that originally leaked the news of the trip is now saying that David canceled the Hawaii trip because of the backlash from the leak. And I guess if the timeline with this is all true, then we could expect David to return to YouTube early 2022 with a ton of content. However, based on what Corinna said earlier, there is a chance that David might try and come back on his podcast views for months before his big return to vlogging, I guess to maybe like test the waters. I guess we'll have to wait and see here to see what actually happens, but are you guys ready for a David Dobrik comeback? Let me know in the comments down below. Now back over to Johnny for the comments. Thanks so much for those updates, Mackenzie. Well, folks, that has been today's show, but before we get out of here, I'm going to check out some of your comments from our last weekly roundup. Aiden says, it is utterly gracious on Stephen King's part to not only disagree with JK Rowling, but also not reciprocate the energy she gave him for it. He's willing to defend her rights to an opinion, even if he completely disagrees. Well, that's what America's all all about, right? Alex Bright says, we don't deserve Stephen King, I swear. His books are not only good, but written by a good person. Hey, who knew the two went hand in hand? Punky Brewstar 83 says, as a technical scientist, I am so pleased that so many science related topics are turning up on IO. I know it is largely because of the science meme, but I am so here for it. Hey, that this if anything, we started the science meme or whatever. Well, Jared did definitely give Jared credit for that. But yeah, we love science stories here at IO, so we're definitely going to keep bringing these stories to you guys for sure. Adlo the Gnome says, he tried to rob the beast while he was in beast mode. Ooh, yeah, and that did not go well. Bonnie Urso says, the next Olympic sport, lava diving. You read it here first, people. Oh, God, I hope not. I hope that is a terrible idea. <laughs> but for now, that has been today's show. Big thanks to Jared Bronstein, Mackenzie Smith, and our editing god, Danielle, for all of her hard work. I've been your host, Johnny Rogers, and until next time, stay classy, YouTube. Oh, hello. It's the weekly roundup. How are you? I hope you're well. I am also well. Focus? Cool? Yeah? Alright. Not too long. Sorry. Not. On average, those who played brain games did. On average, those who played gate. Oh my god. On average, those who played brain games. Oh my. Ah! And then more recently, an Instagram account called Duxmo. Uh, I don't know. I'm not saying that. Du uh, Dux Duex. How do you say that in French? Du de de moi de moi de moi. Don't cancel me. I don't know why I thought that one sounded better, but here we are.